All right, welcome back to Binary Adventure, uh, Rad Air 2 tutorial. And um, in this video, I'm going to go over, uh, I, I saved the best for last. No, I'm kidding. Um, this probably won't be the last video, but um, this is something that I'm sure a lot of you would be looking forward to, especially coming from uh, disassemblers such as Binary Ninja, Hopper, and uh, of course, Ida Pro. So, and that is a graph view. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a crack me that I was working on with a friend of mine named uh, Vipul Nair. So um, I'm just gonna jump right into it. So we're gonna open it up. It's called level two. And um, actually I'm gonna give you a little bonus, bonus tip here. So I was gonna open that up and then analyze it right away, but instead you can just do R2 hyphen A and pass the A switch to it and it will automatically analyze it as soon as you open it up. So we don't have to do the AAA thing right now. So now it's been analyzed. We're going to just jump right into it. I already know there's a main function. Um, usually you type AFL. I'm just going to go ahead and go straight to main. And then um, instead of doing your V, you're going to do double V. So pretty simple. Just instead of V, it's VV. And then boom, look familiar makes things uh, pretty easy to understand when you're looking at a graph like this. Um, however, the only thing is, is now you don't have the ability to go and select specific lines. So when we do this now, we're no longer changing the seek. See, the seek is right here. Seek's not moving anymore, like the rest of red air, because the, the nature of the way this thing works, it just wouldn't really work, because where would it be when we're here, you know? It, there'd be too many different addresses to, it just doesn't work. So. Um, they've come up with other ways of dealing with things. So, um, for example, obviously with the graph, you're just going to be looking at the graph. And then um, one of the things you're going to want to do is be able to follow stuff again. So if you can't seek, then how are you going to get into this call over here where it says wrong password? Well, if you look closely in red here, there's, it says GA, GC, GD, GF. So you just type those two letters and it takes you there. It's super easy. So I'm just going to type... Uh, I'm not going to press colon. I'm just going to press G, F, and then boom, we're in that function that was called there, okay? Um, and then you can see here when we scroll down, you can scroll up and down with the arrows uh, with J and K, and you can even do like page up and page down to jump a little bit farther. So now that we're in here, um, you can see there's a bunch of stuff being loaded uh, in stack memory here. Um, these local variables. And then um, there's this other function called unmix string nibbles. Sounds interesting. Let's go there. GA. And then, so now there's like a bunch of stuff going on. It's starting to look like, more like a regular program instead of our stupid little uh, example programs that didn't do much. So, however, um, this is still manageable. But if for some reason you go into a function um, and it's you just want to see a different view of it, just like with V, just like with regular uh, visual mode, you can press lowercase p and uppercase p to toggle. So I'm going to press uppercase p to go here, and you can see the call graph, just like in Ida Pro. Okay, it just it abbreviates everything, and it kind of zooms out. And you could still do those jumps. See, you could still follow this jump. You could go um, and follow different calls and things uh, by hitting those keys right here that it's telling you. Um, and then I'm going to go back here. And then, um, so now I'm going to go back one more and I'm going to scroll down a bit and um, look at some of this other stuff here. I'm going to hit GG, go to this other function. So now I'm going to hit GE, follow that function, GA, follow this function, and there's a bunch of other function calls. Looks like the same function here. Um, there we go. So I'm kind of just hopping around the program. I'm going to go back again. And I, what I want to show you is that there are other um, graph modes too. Oops, I went back too far. So uh, again, you can hit colon. You can hit S main. It'll take us back to main again. So if you do that. But I also want to show you another way to navigate. So I'm going to hit GF again. Now let's say we want to get back to main. So what you can do in this mode is instead of having to type that uh, cross-reference, the AXT command, you can just hit X like you would do in Ida Pro or something. So um, 
if you're in like this function here, we, the, the address that is selected is the beginning of the function. And so if you hit X here, it's gonna give you cross references to that function. And um, there's only one cross reference and it's being called in main. So, um, and this is the index number. So now all you do is hit that index number. So you hit zero. And now it took me back out to main because I just followed the cross reference so that's another way to kind of navigate around the program. So I'm gonna hit GF and then um, I'm gonna, so it's calling this unmixed string nibble. So I'm gonna hit GA and now I'm gonna hit X again and we can see that that's being called in one location. I hit zero, it takes us back out to this main, to this not main, but to the previous function, okay? So let's go to that function that was called a whole bunch of times again. Um, let's see if I can find it. So you can see here that this uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0000974 is being called a bunch of times. So I'm gonna hit GA to go there and now I'm gonna hit X and see, you can see here that there are more cross references. So we could, um, we could go to one of the other cross references. I'm gonna hit two this time and it took us to a different function that calls it a bunch also. So that's kind of how you navigate around and in graph mode. So I'm going to hit, instead of hitting a uh, capital P, I'm going to hit lowercase p this time. We're going to go forward. Um, so this, you can see here, the only difference here is that it's showing you uh, what Ida calls the line numbers or the uh, memory addresses of where these instructions are. And then it shows you the instructions, the actual machine code uh, bytes here too. So usually you kind of navigate around this. You just see the assembly um, by going back, hitting uppercase P. And then we can hit lowercase p if we want to see everything else. And then we could hit another lowercase p again. And um, it just shows us different views. But this isn't super helpful. I'm going to go back because um, there we go. This is what I want to see. So that function we were looking at didn't, didn't make any conditional branches. So th there wasn't much of a graph to show. But this function here, there's a lot more to show. So um, again, we're back at the original uh, entry graph screen that where it just shows the assembly and then by hitting lowercase p it shows the um, memory addresses and the bytes of the instructions and then by hitting lowercase p again now it brings us way out to this uh, kind of far out graph here so you can see the overall control flow of the program much easier so if you have like a really large function like maybe like printf or something that would be useful um, and there's some other modes too. You can see the name of the mode up here. It says BB tiny. I don't really know what that means. This, this looks similar to the original graph to me, but it, apparently this is a different one. Um, and then this is what they call summary, which is like that, that call graph that I showed you at the beginning. And then we hit P lowercase P one more time and now we're back. So, so that's pretty much how you navigate around in uh, graph mode. One last thing I wanted to show you is um, if you want to make comments, so you can make comments in graph mode, but it's kind of weird because um, from what I've seen, I mean, you can, you can make comments using the command line, which is probably a better idea to do. So like if I was in graph mode, I want to make a comment in the command line, I'd probably hit P here and then um, I would enter the comment command to um, make the comment based on the memory address because the problem is, is that Otherwise, it's going gonna, it's gonna to comment on the seek location, which is always going to be the top of the function that you're currently in, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go back out to uh, visual mode. Um, and then we can, I can show you a pretty quick way to make comments. So here, we can change the seek again. So if you want to make a comment like on this line right here, you just hit semicolon, and then you type your comment. So I just put this is a comment. See, and now you see our comment right there. And if you want to remove the comment, you just go, navigate to the line again, hit semicolon again, and then as it says right there, you just put in hyphen or minus, and uh, that'll take the comment away. So that's how you leave comments in uh, Red Air. Keep in mind though, that if you're gonna be doing that and you leave the program, the comments aren't gonna be saved unless you save the project. So we'll go over project management in another video, but um, you're gonna have to save the project and exit it in order to uh, keep those comments. So uh, thanks for watching, and if you liked it, don't forget to subscribe. We'll be posting more videos.